Hi and welcome to a video in which we are going to look at the properties of shapes. When I say properties, I mean we're going to look at what makes a square a square. How is a trapezium different to a rhombus? And we're going to look at all the mathematical notation that tells us what shape it is we're having a look at. The first set of shapes that we're going to have a look at have one thing in common. They're all four sided shapes. And therefore, they all come under the heading of quadrilaterals. I'm going to start with one of the more familiar shapes, that being a square. Most of you looking at this shape will recognise it as a square, simply because it looks like a square. But actually, in maths, that's not good enough. We need proof that it is a square. So we need to examine some of the properties of the shape to be absolutely sure. So what makes a square a square? Well, let's look at the corners to start with. A square has to have a right angle in each corner. A right angle, of course, being 90 degrees. So if you draw this shape, little box, in each corner, it's telling anybody looking at it that it has indeed got four right angles. But it's not the only shape that has four right angles, so we need to know a little bit more. Well, the other thing about a square is that all sides have to be equal. And in order to show this, what we do is draw a little line through the centre of each side, telling us that, yes, each side is of equal length. Looking at that shape now, we have absolutely no doubt that it is indeed a square. It is worth mentioning at this point that another property that a square or other shapes have are the number of lines of symmetry that they have. Now, in order for this video not to be too long, I'm not going to include lines of symmetry here. I do have it covered in one of my other videos, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this one. Let's do something similar with a rectangle. What makes a rectangle a rectangle? Well, this is the shape that has some similar properties to a square because, in fact, it also has to have four right angles at its corners. The difference between a rectangle and a square, of course, is that with a rectangle, we don't have four equal sides. What we do have are two pairs of equal sides, the top and the bottom of the same length, the left and the right are the same length. So how do we differentiate? Well, if I put a line through that side and a line through that side, the same as we did with the square, that is telling us that the two sides are the same. But of course, I can't just put a line through those two because that suggests that all four are the same. Instead, what I do is put two lines through these. So the single lines either side tell us we have one pair of equal length sides. The double lines on the top and the bottom tells us that they are another pair of equal lengths. So that makes a rectangle. So for our third shape, let me tell you about its properties to begin with. First of all, it has one, two, three, four sides, all the same length. It has no right angles. These two angles here are smaller than a right angle, but they are the same angle. These two angles opposite each other here are larger than a right angle, but they are both the same angle. So we have four equal sides, two sets of opposite angles, which are the same. Once you have those properties, and I'll spell some of these shapes, this one, we have a rhombus. And here we have a shape that is very similar to a rhombus. That angle and that angle are the same. That angle and that angle are the same. However, in this case, we have two sides here of equal length and we have another pair of sides that are equal length. But clearly, the bottom and the top are longer than the sides. So it's not quite a rhombus. It doesn't have the four equal sides. Instead, it is a parallelogram. Two sets of parallel sides. It looks like a rectangle that's being pushed over. Let's have a look at this shape. That side and that side are the same length. That side and that side are the same length. And we do have a pair 
of equal angles at the sides. However, the top and bottom angles are different. The good thing about this shape is it looks very much like a kite. And in fact, that is its mathematical name. It is a kite. And we have one further quadrilateral to consider. Now you can see that I've drawn what on the face of it appear to be two different shapes. But in fact, these are the same because they share a particular quality. If you look at the two shapes, you can see that the top side here is parallel to the bottom. And the same with the right hand side at the top and the bottom are again parallel. Now, it does look on the face of it as though they are different because the left hand side here has two very similar looking sides. They are pretty much the same angle and it all looks very regular. On the right hand side, however, we have a vertical side and one at an angle. In fact, with this particular shape, the angles of the sides are not so important. If a quadrilateral simply has one set of parallel lines, then it is called a trapezium. Now, moving away from the four-sided shapes, the quadrilaterals, here we have the three-sided shape. All the shapes that we have on the screen here are all triangles, but they have different names because they have different properties. Looking at the triangle on the top left here, all three sides are the same length, and that actually means that all the three angles are the same size as well. And because everything is equal, we call it the equilateral triangle. Now, on the top right, we have two triangles that do appear to be different, but actually share the same properties in that they have two sides that are the same length and one side that isn't. Here we have two longer sides and one shorter one. On this one, we have two shorter sides and one longer one. They are, in fact, the same triangle and this is called the isosceles triangle. Let's move down to the bottom right. This triangle has in its corner a right angle and because of that it is called a right angled triangle. The bottom left is the strange one because in fact when it comes to properties the only real property that it has is that everything is different. The three sides are all different lengths the three angles are all totally different, and we call this one a scalene triangle. And finally, we are going to have a look at a circle. Rather than considering the properties of the circle, it is more important that we know the names of some of the parts of a circle. So let's just have a look at three. The first one is a line that goes through the center straight across and cuts a circle in half and we call that line diameter. This smaller line here goes from the center to the edge. It doesn't go through the center, it stops in the middle and goes to the outer edge and we call this line the radius. And then of course we have the circle itself, the length of the line, the actual outside line of the circle. In most shapes we call it a perimeter, but in a circle it is called the circumference. And these really are three names that are well worth learning. So those are the properties of some of the more common two-dimensional shapes. I did mention earlier that we also look at lines of symmetry when we're considering shapes, but I've covered that in a different video and there is a link to my side here if you want to have a look at that. We will also be looking at three-dimensional and multi-sided shapes in other videos. Thank you.